Okay, so this is our Rocket Indie Lab, and this is by Thomas and I, and we had help from, or should we say last names on the YouTube page? Gosh, heck no. Okay, so, and we got help from Tom, but yeah. And this is our attempt to load a video that didn't work. We'll show you later. And this video, is it working? No, there's no way. Press play. Oh, what? <gasps> <laughs> what what you call? No, no, uh, Boy Scouts. <laughs> we didn't think this would go. <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't think that was gonna work. Okay. So the purpose of our experiment was to find uh, the parts of a rocket that would make the best conditions to make it go the highest. Because we're, we're simple people. We like things to go high and fast. So uh, we had. Four parts. The first one was to see what the size of the fin would do. The second was to discover what the shape of the nose cone would do. The third was the pressure that we put in our water rockets. And the fourth was the amount of water put into our rockets. So then this is our basic list of materials that pretty much went into our rockets, which required the empty two liter soda bottles and poster board, kind of like science fair project poster board, duct tape, styrofoam ball, no, get that out later, snow cone, <laughs> we had like snow cone, cone holders, uh, plastic bags, small rocks, an iPhone, a computer with a logger pro, and a launch apparatus. And so we didn't want to like cram the PowerPoint with uh, words, but we can just tell you that we thought that um, like a conical nose cone would have the best conditions and longer fins and more pressure and more water would do the job just fine. <clears throat> so our procedure was that we wanted to test the four variables that we said earlier in our hypothesis. Um, so what we did is we cut different lengths of fin and <laughs> so this is <laughs> this is not what all our rockets <laughs> look, looked like because we did lots of, after we finished taking our data, we did lots of messing around as you could see on our video. <laughs> so, but we had different lengths of fins, so the short and then the long, and then we duct taped the fins to the rockets and then we did, so we did like three trials per variable so that we could get like an average and stuff. And so we went outside and we filled the rockets with one liter of water, so about halfway. And except for, of course, when we changed the variable of the amount of water. And then, so what we would do with the launcher is that you would fill it up. So you'd fill up this rocket with water. And then you'd have to like turn the launcher sideways, which is basically a PVC like tube that you would pump up with pressure with the bike. So we turn that sideways, and then put the rocket on really quickly, and then it would be like a seal, and water wouldn't be leaking out. And then we would pump it up with the bike pressure, with pressure from the bike pump. And so, like the gauge on the bike pump, like wasn't working. <laughs> so we our constant was 10 pumps, and we were a little worried about this, that it wasn't going to be constant through each experiment, but then. We'll show you our data, and we were actually like, like it was pretty, it was really well. Um, and so how we came to these designs, we didn't put this on because it would just be a long, unnecessary paragraph. Um, but so we had done this before when we were in Cub Scouts, building these basic rockets, but of course, we didn't really know what we were doing back then. We were just kind of like taping stuff on. So what we wanted to do is that we wanted to test what we saw as the major characteristics of a rocket. So, and we used this paperboard, so we would cut it into a triangle of different lengths and then duct tape it on. And then for the nose cone, so we knew, we thought a nose cone like this would work the best. Can you see it? So we thought a nose cone like this would work the best. And what we did was we would tape it on the top with duct tape, like that. And we would make sure that all the rockets have the same mass too by putting yeah. different amounts of Material. Yeah, because we found out, I don't think 
we said, but we found out we masked a tennis ball, and then we used that, and we put that in the nose cone, because we found that we were knew this from our Cub Scouting days, that you needed extra weight in the nose cone so that the rocket would actually fly instead of just going sideways and then like off in a like path you couldn't measure. So we did that. Um, we talked about that. Yeah. All right. Here's all of our data. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> so the first thing we tested was the length of the fin versus the height and times the apex. And so at first we had one with no fins at all, and then we had the short fins and the long fins, as you could see down there. And it was um, the long fins went the highest. Um, and then when we did the same thing with the type of nose cone. The, Oh, that's already six minutes. Yeah, two minutes. Pointing those kind of hard. Uh, and the moment that you've made. <laughs> Hit that amplifier. The turn it off. <laughs> turn it off. Just turn it off. Left button. <laughs> so we did. I don't think we said this earlier. We thought it was a pretty. <laughs> Let him go. The <laughs> time's rolling. Let him go. We have to talk about the nose yeah, cone. No, no. So we thought it was a pretty clever way. So we had the nose cones, but then we needed a different type so we of like nose cones. So <laughs> I went and I bought these and we like flat spheres. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we cut them in half. You have 90 seconds. So right. analysis, uh, we found that the long fins went the highest. And the, uh, <laughs> stop. And the conical nose cone also went the highest. And um, the amount of water, we thought as we put more water in the rocket, it would fly higher because we thought more water would act as more fuel but it actually would just make the rocket way too heavy. So we found out that water was more of a way to keep the water pressure, not really as much as a fuel or some, some type of like fuel. Is that what we, I just mm -hmm. talked about that. Pressure, we, um, we usually pumped at 10 pumps and then the last couple times we did 30 pumps and it went significantly higher as you could have seen if I didn't skip through everything. So conclusion is, Everything we just said. Yeah. This video, should we? That's not? a dumb video. That's a dumb video. <laughs> no, go back. That was cool. Okay, Wait, so we were that? shocked. 30 seconds. We were shocked that the rockets would hit the ground, and then you can't, it's a quick video, but like, like they made a sense, like that's, that was hard to pull out. We were just shocked by that. We thought that was really cool. Like it made a nice dent. Okay. <laughs> we don't have time. <laughs> and that's Tom, <laughs> and. You can't see his face on YouTube. And um, we got the rocket stuck on my neighbor's roof when we were messing around. Okay, we're done. So. <laughs> uh -huh, nice. We have time for one question. Yeah. Then, so um, you saw uh, you saw how like pressure affected um, was the most like significant factor in varying the height of the rocket. So, and pressure was probably. Um, like affected the rate of like the flow of the water. So could you have in theory like modeled the trajectory of the rocket using the thrust equations? Like and then done error on that? Is that a possibility? Well do you not know? I think we only covered thrust in like one video and I don't really remember what the thrust equation is, so I cannot can uh I cannot answer that question with hundred percent accuracy. So I don't know. I don't like we could I don't I just don't know what was, the yeah. equation uses. So I was just curious. I can't answer it. Go watch. Thanks again. Thank you.